Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Lately, and by lately I mean like in the last couple of years, I've been hearing a lot about the initiative to develop a pistol with rifle-like accuracy. And the company that's spearheading this movement seems to be focusing on things like flatter shooting cartridges and, you know, counterweights under the barrel to minimize muzzle climb and a few other mechanical tweaks like that. Now, uh, there's nothing at all wrong with what they're doing. You know, it's always great to see companies experimenting with, you know, new and innovative uh, handgun designs, but as I've attempted to ascertain what rifle-like accuracy in a pistol would really mean, I'm concerned that the features they're working on may not actually be that relevant. Uh, and so today, I want to talk a little bit about, first, what I would consider to be rifle-like accuracy in a handgun, uh, and then how I would go about trying to achieve that, and then we'll take my prototype out to the range and test it and see if I'm actually able to achieve it. So first off, what does the phrase rifle-like accuracy in a handgun even mean? Uh, are we talking about mechanical accuracy or practical accuracy? I mean, I've talked before about, you know, how I've seen write-ups of, you know, demonstrations where companies would take, you know, like a subcompact or a snub nose revolver, and they'd load it with super premium match-grade ammunition and clamp it in a machine rest to completely eliminate human error, and then test fire it in a range tunnel where the air is completely, you know, still and dead. Uh, and they're able to demonstrate that under these highly controlled conditions, a lot of these handguns are capable of sub-minute of angle accuracy. You know, the same standard to which, you know, bench rest rifles are held. So, I don't think there's really any question of developing a handgun with the same mechanical accuracy as a rifle. You know, most modern handguns are theoretically capable of sub-minute of angle accuracy, just like modern rifles are. The difference is that your average person with a solid bench rest and a good optic can probably actually shoot a rifle and get sub-minute of angle groups, whereas you know, nobody except maybe Herb Parsons or Jerry Misilek can actually shoot a sub-minute of angle group with a compact handgun. So when we're talking about rifle-like accuracy in a handgun, what we're almost certainly talking about is practical accuracy. And if you think back to the testing that I did on practical accuracy a while ago, uh, there's a couple of important conclusions that we can draw from that that are relevant to this discussion. For one thing, in the course of that testing, we determined that I was able to shoot a carbine about twice as accurately as a handgun from an offhand position. Uh, specifically, with a carbine, I was able to shoot about a 10 minute of angle group, uh, whereas with a handgun, that would open up to about 20 minutes of angle. So, if the target's at 25 yards, then with the carbine, I should be able to shoot about a 2.5 inch group, and with the handgun, about a 5 inch group. We also concluded that the most significant factors influencing practical accuracy are how easy it is to hold the gun steady and how precise the sights allow you to line up the gun on target. So if we want to build a handgun with rifle-like accuracy, I would say that before we consider things like bullet drop and muzzle flip, we need to concern ourselves with, you know, making the optics precise enough to give you a rifle-like sight picture, uh, and then making it so you can actually hold the gun as stable as you would a rifle. Now, the sight picture problem is pretty easy to address because there's a lot of red dot sights out there now that are amenable to mounting on handguns as well as on rifles. Uh, and so, you know, you just pick one of those uh, red dot sights, mount it on the pistol, and now you've got a sight picture that should facilitate rifle-like precision. Now, the stability problem is a little bit more challenging to address. 
because uh, you know how do you make a handgun more stable or easier to hold still you know you might think well you could put a stock on the handgun but if you think about it fundamentally the difference between pistols and rifles is that rifles have stocks so if you put a stock on a pistol you no longer have a pistol you don't have a pistol with rifle like accuracy you have a rifle a small, you know, portable, compact rifle, perhaps, but a rifle nonetheless. And a pistol with a stock is still going to be bulky enough that you're not going to be able to wear it discreetly in a holster. You're not going to be able to use it in the capacity that you would normally use a pistol, at least not without detaching the stock. Uh, if you put a stock on a pistol, you also run the risk of getting it classified as an SBR under the NFA, which subjects it to additional legal restrictions. Some people have been able to get around that by classifying their stocks as braces. Uh, the way things are going, it sort of remains to be seen if that's going to be a viable option going forward. Anyway, if our goal is to build a pistol with rifle-like accuracy, and not just a compact rifle, uh, then we need to solve the stability problem, and providing a stock or brace for the pistol is not going to be a valid solution. But think about how a stock actually works. You know, it provides this additional structural member on the back of the gun that you pull into your shoulder and you know, the compressive force that you're able to apply stiffens up your arm muscles a little bit. It also provides an additional pivot point to uh, constrain the motion of the gun. So what if we took the concept of a stock and we simply reversed the force vectors so that instead of having a stock in compression, you now have a thin collapsible member in tension that would allow you to push out onto the gun and have the same stabilizing effect of tensing up your muscles and constraining the motion of the gun. So to test the viability of this concept, I built a prototype. Here we have a Springfield XD handgun. It already had a, a little cross pin for a lanyard loop on the bottom of the grip. And then I just drilled an additional hole up through the beaver tail here uh, so that I could attach loops of paracord both above and below the grip and then attach those to an improvised sling that I just cobbled together out of a nylon strap. And because the sling has two points of attachment both above and below the grip, as I push out against the grip, the gun just naturally renders into a very stable position. In fact, theoretically, this setup could actually provide better practical stability than a shoulder stock. Because if you think about how a stock works, uh, you know, the gun pivots about your shoulder. Uh, so, you know, let's say the gun is three feet long and you're shooting at a target, you know, 10 yards away, 10 times the length of the gun. Um, you know, if you move the muzzle of the gun one inch, you know, up or down or left or right, the point of impact is going to move 10 inches, you know, in that direction, you know, because the gun is pivoting about your shoulder and so the displacement gets multiplied the further downrange you go. With this setup, again, the gun is still basically pivoting about my shoulder or maybe my back uh, on the sling, but because I have two attachment points, now this is acting like a double pendulum. And so the barrel of the gun, the axis of the gun, tends to remain parallel as I move it in any direction. And so if I move the muzzle an inch, I may only get an inch of displacement in the point of impact regardless of the range at which I'm shooting. So I think that my improvised pistol sling here provides a good solution to the stability problem and it does so without adding any appreciable weight or bulk to the gun. It, you know, it doesn't compromise its concealability uh, and it doesn't compromise its legal status you know, because there's no way that ATF could argue that this floppy little sling constitutes a stock 
Uh, and in fact, you know, people have been putting lanyards on pistols for hundreds of years. You know, every cavalry unit in the world, you know, insisted that its pistols be equipped with lanyards so that if you dropped one in the middle of a cavalry charge, you wouldn't lose it. Uh, you know, this sling simply represents a more sophisticated lanyard that, in addition to preventing you from losing your gun should you drop it in the middle of a cavalry charge, also provides a stabilizing feature should you need to take a more precise shot. And so, if I were tasked with building a pistol with rifle-like accuracy, I would build something like this. And since I have built something like this, Let's now take it out to the range and see just how accurate it is. Again, you know, based on our previous testing, I know that my accuracy with a carbine is about 10 minutes of angle, so if I can shoot a 2.5 inch group or better at 25 yards with this, then we will have conclusively demonstrated that this does enable rifle-like accuracy in a pistol. Okay, so at 25 yards, this is the group that I shot. Uh, overall, that's about a three and a half inch group. But, you know, I've been doing some other shooting earlier today on other projects, and my arms, to be honest, are already pretty tired. And there were two shots of that 10 shot string where I really felt like I flinched pretty badly. Uh, and I'm guessing that that's these two holes down here. So. If I exclude those two, then that leaves us with a solid two and a half inch group. Okay, so strictly speaking, I was not able to demonstrate rifle-like accuracy with my pistol here today. Uh, but I came awfully close. Uh, I feel like if I was to perform this test again when I'm better rested or just repeat the, the test until I was able to get 10 shots off without flinching, I really think I could put 10 rounds inside of a 2.5 inch circle at 25 yards with this gun in its current configuration. Uh, that said, just repeating a test over and over until you get the results you're looking for so you can present them is not the most honest way to present data. And the price of ammunition being what it is these days, that would also be potentially a pretty expensive proposition. So I guess we'll let the data stand and you can interpret it as you will. But I really think that this concept of, you know, a pistol in combination with both a precision optic and a two-point sling that provides for greater stability really has a lot of potential. Uh, even though I don't really have a way to profit by this invention, I would love to see this thing take off uh, and see what other people and the shooting community in general are able to do with this concept. In fact, uh, even though mechanically it's pretty rudimentary compared to a lot of things that I've built, I'd have to say that this is actually one of my more exciting inventions because it is pretty simple to implement and yet it offers the potential to greatly enhance the practical accuracy of a handgun without adding a lot of weight or bulk or potentially subjecting it to additional regulation. So hopefully you found this concept as exciting as I did, and until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.